Hello Allegheny Jam students, Mr. Jones here, wanting to talk about just tuning the guitar and different ways to go about it. And uh, I know a lot of you have the electronic tuner, so we'll talk about that too. But first, let's just talk about good things to know when you're tuning any instrument. One thing, of course, is you need to know the names of the strings. So I think you mostly do. And we have that low E, and uh, the A is the fifth string, D is the fourth string, G is the third string, the second string B, and the first string or thinnest string closest to the ground is an E. So you have a high E, the first string, and you have a low E, the sixth string. So that's good to know. They, you can hear how they sound the same even though you have a high version and a low version. So that's cool. So low string is E, sixth string, fifth string is A, fourth string is D, third string G, second string B, and then you have that high E. And a nice thing to know, if you play those first three strings, you have a nice E minor chord just built in without even doing anything. That's kind of nice, you can kind of get to where you hear that. So one thing that a lot of guitar players do, they, they use tuning checkpoints, and we'll talk about that. In other words, if I play the second string on the fifth fret, so I'm going up, now my guitar, each guitar can be different. I have a dot on my fifth fret, if you see that. So I touch the fifth fret on the second string, and play that note, and then I play the first string open, and you get what's called a unison, the same note on two strings. So I'll just give an example. If my first string was a little out of tune, I'll, I'll tune it a little out, and I would go to the second string and pick that fifth fret, and I go, whoa, we first, then you have to hear whether it's low or high. I hear, you think that's low or high, higher? I'm guessing lower, and here's a really good thing about tuning any instrument you let the string ring as you change the string. So I'll do it. Here I'll let it ring and I could hear it changing as I tuned it. So you don't want to be tuning without hearing what you're doing because you might go too high and guess what, you'd break a string. And it happens to everybody, but less if you let it uh, let the string ring as you change the string. So, so that's a really good thing. So the second string, fifth fret is a tuning checkpoint. You got one different spot. The third string is the fourth fret. And that's the second string open. So fourth fret, third string fretted, second string open. And that's a B note. And then the back to the fifth fret, all the rest are gonna be fifth fret checkpoints. So the I'm on the fourth string, fifth fret, and that checks the third string open. That's a G. And then the fifth string, fifth fret, and that gives you a D unison, and then the sixth string, the lowest string, fifth fret, a little out there, and we'll talk about electronic tuners in a minute too, but what I like to do is do that a couple times, and those are good, a really nice thing to keep in mind on playing the guitar is those tuning checkpoints are great places to slide, so listen by slide for maybe a fret or two lower, that sounds good, you can kind of hear if you're in tune too, that's the fifth fret, fourth fret, string, fifth, you've heard that sound before, fifth string, kind of getting ready to go, kind of like a banjo lick on the guitar, so tuning checkpoints, remember it's, it's the fifth fret on all the strings except the third string, which is the fourth fret, and that's because it's just tuned closer together, so uh, one thing I like to do is play like the first Play a note, let's say a G note on the first string, the third fret, and then pick the third string, which is a G. Check that like that. So the G and the G together. Third fret, first string, and the open third string. And you could use a finger and a pick, or just pick, you know, just jump your pick across. Then go to the third fret, second string, and play the open fourth string, the low D and a high D. You know, you're fretting the high D. Sounds pretty good, right? Then you go to an A, say, on the second fret, third string, and the open fifth string A. And you can kind of see if they're in tune pretty good. It gives you a good idea. Then you go to the E on the second fret, fourth string, with the low E. That's just another good way to check. I'll give you one other way like that. Say you go way up to the seventh fret on the first string, and you got the second string open. That's another check. A high B and a low B, you know, closer together, first and second string. And that's an octave. So your unison was the same note, and that fifth fret check was a unison. This is octaves. 
Then I'm going to go to the second string. Since it's different, it's going to be the eighth fret. Remember your dots? I've got three, five, seven, and then between the dots will be eight. And I'm going to pick that note on the second string, eighth fret, and the open third. Again, an octave. Then I go back to the seventh fret on the third string, and the open fourth. That's a D. You start to learn your notes up the neck a little bit, too, which is cool. Then I go an A, the seventh fret on the fourth string with the open fifth. And then I got one more, fifth string, seventh fret, E, with a low E. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and think about those kind of things. So tuning checkpoints, five, five, you know, except for the fourth fret on the third string, five, four, five, five, five. And then if you want to do the skipping a string, third fret and the open third, second string third, open fourth, second fret third with the open fifth. So you're skipping a string, right? Second fret, right? Pretty cool. And then I went up here and did the octaves. Seven and open, eight and open, seven and open, seven open. So it changes that, that uh, one place. Okay, let's look at an electronic tuner. Now, if I'm doing an electronic tuner, I've got a little different tuner than you might have, but I'll put it up here kind of close to you, try to. And see, I've got one. The main thing about it is it has in the, the middle point is what you're aiming for. And it's got different colors. I'll try to get this up there close. See if we can even see it there. Okay, there's mine. It's going to be a little backwards looking to you possibly. But when I pick it, it's going to go, I need to know the name of the note. So when it gets that green in the middle, I'll get a little out of tune. You can see it's going to be one side or the other. If it's low, it's going to be to one side. Okay, that's low. And I'll tighten it up. So another thing about tuning, you tighten it up to make the pitch go higher. So I'm raising it up. See if it goes toward the middle. Let's hope so. Ah, mine turns green. They're different the way they work, but they usually change color. Oh, and then it shows both sides. Okay, good. I'll go to my B string. Let's see if it's in. Oh, it's a little bit off, so it's a little bit low, I think. I'm tightening it up. Let's take it up there to the... Oh, yeah, good. My G. My G looks pretty good. Let's see if it's a little high. Let's see. It's going to be the other way. Okay, a little high, so i got to lower it. And what I usually like to do is go below a little bit. A little bit below and come back up. There we go. Pretty good. Now my D string, four strings. So you got to know the names of the notes. You all got that. And remember Mr. Steve Kilby had that 88 Dynamite Goodbye 80. You probably remember that. It's a good way to remember it from six to the first string. A's looking good. And my E's looking good. So that's, uh, you're going to see the colors going like that, right? So that's a good thing to know. And then you also want to remember to turn your tuner off. And one last thing about tuners is, uh, well, first turn them off because the batteries will run down. And that's not, uh, they don't last very long. Another thing is you may have a tuner that has different letters at the bottom when you push the, uh, the uh, button at the bottom. There's several buttons. One might say, it might say C, which means chromatic, which is fine for any instrument. It might say G, which would be for a guitar. It might say B for a banjo. So if you have a banjo and you see the B, that's fine. I usually recommend going to the C for all of them. It might have a U, which would be ukulele. It might have a V for a violin or a fiddle. So notice those letters at the bottom because you might want to put it on C or the instrument that you're trying to tune. Okay? That's a good thing. And if you see uh, numbers like 440 or 441, 442, you want it to be on 440. Okay, that's the standard uh, pitch there. So 440, if you see those numbers change, you need to turn it off or just keep punching it until it gets back to 440. Okay? And so you got your tuning checkpoints, some different ways to get octaves and unisons. And then you got your electronic tuner. So the main thing is just, uh, you can. I'm going to hit my open strings one last time to wind up this right here. Okay? So here's my open strings. You can always just tune it to another guitar if they're in tune, right? So experiment with that. Don't break a string if you can help it. Let it uh, let the string, you know, change the string as you let it ring, okay? Here's my open strings one more time, and happy tuning and happy picking. Here we go. Sixth string, E. Fifth string, A. Fourth string, D. Third string. Second string, B. And the high, E. And here's all the strings together. What they sound like sort of is a, just a regular open guitar. It's kind of pretty. Okay? So happy tuning, and uh, keep on enjoying your guitar. Thanks a bunch.